Okay, for the next few videos, I'm going to move on to the rate of chemical change topic, which is 1.5 if you're doing separate science, or 2.5 if you're doing double award. Okay, so what exactly does rate mean? The rate of a chemical reaction is how quickly the reactants are converted into products. There are four different factors that affect the rate of a reaction. There's the concentration of the reactants, the temperature of the reaction, the surface area of any solid reactants, and finally there's whether or not you've got a catalyst. Something that's concentrated has not had very much water added to it, and something that's dilute has had lots of water added to it. A concentrated reactant will react with a faster rate than a dilute reactant. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of reaction. The finer you chop something up, the more surface area it has. And the more surface area it has, the more surface it has to react, and the faster the reaction. In this experiment, we're going to be looking at how a catalyst can change the rate of a reaction. And the reaction we're going to be looking at is the decomposition, the breaking down of hydrogen peroxide. So in here, I've got um, 200 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide has got the formula H2O2, which sounds really similar to water, but with extra oxygen. So what hydrogen peroxide does slowly over time is it breaks down from H2O2 into water and oxygen. And it's doing that right now. But the reaction is very, very slow. So it would be quite a dull video. We'd have to be waiting here maybe for a year for the reaction to finish for all of the hydrogen peroxide to slowly break down into water and give off oxygen gas. It's happening so slowly we can't see any oxygen being given off at the moment but we're going to see what effect adding a catalyst has on the reaction. The catalyst we're gonna use is potassium iodide, and these white crystals here, and that's gonna speed the reaction up. Catalysts speed up the rate of a chemical reaction. Now, so that we can see what's, uh, so that we can see the impact that this catalyst has, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of washing up liquid, And I'm going to add a little bit of food colouring as well, just so that we can see it clearly. And because this tends to be a little bit of a messy one, I'm going to pop the whole lot in a tray. We're going to try and speed that up by adding our catalyst. The catalyst is not going to get used up in the reaction. The same amount of catalyst will be here at the start as there is at the end but it's going to encourage this reaction to proceed faster. So I'll, I'll pop this in, stand out the way, and we'll see what happens. I'm so glad I put the tray on. Okay, so you can see that a whole load of foam has formed. This foam um, is formed because we've got oxygen gas being produced and I put washing up liquid in there. So the washing up liquid is forming bubbles with the oxygen gas. So all of these bubbles uh, contain oxygen. Now in an earlier video, we said we could test for oxygen gas, not with a lit splint, but with a glowing splint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow the splint out, stick it into the bubbles and see if it relights. Okay, so my splint has relit, which is a positive test for the fact that the bubbles in here must be oxygen gas. Have a go at a few questions, pause the video, and then unpause to see the answers.